When I was a wee lad, I wanted to look like this. And for those of you who don't know, that is the 2000s boy band Busted. They were every girl's teenage heartthrob and every boy's envy. They sang songs about crashing weddings and getting with air hostesses, and they were the coolest thing you could possibly be. And as a skinny, big-headed, nerdy white kid, it was really important that I was cool. So I tried my hardest, and I ended up looking like this. <laughs> yeah, I love that picture. So I, I didn't quite make it. But the point about this is, why did I want to look like that? Because... A, I look terrible, and B, why is it necessary? But the answer is, it is the culture in which I grew up in. This culture of apathy ruling all, in which it's not cool to know things, in which it's not considered cool to go to school and try hard. It's not considered cool if you openly express your love for your family, or for your friends, or for anything. It's a culture in which we put people's appearances over their happiness. We've managed to mechanise happiness into a form that doesn't work. And you guys might be able to see it in a variety of things in your life. It could be that you get a call from your kids and they want you to pick, they want you to pick them up from a party. But you have to park around the corner just in case their friends realise they have parents who like, you know, love them. Or you might drop your kids off at school and you say, oh, love you, see you later. And they go, oh no. Do that as if it's some sort of state covered secret that parents love their kids and kids love their parents. It's ridiculous. And it's managed to transfer itself into our relationships as well because modern relationships have become about who's playing it cool more, who can let on less that they like the other person. It's about pretending that you're not that interested. Treating them mean to, keeping, to keep them keen is possibly the stupidest idea I've ever heard. It's as if Openly expressing your love for someone is reserved for one day of the year only on Valentine's Day. It is a ridiculous notion. But this is a good story that I'm going to tell you. And it's about how it's reinforced. So we were in the bar once, me and my friends. And I um, uh, love them all to bits. But this is about how we reinforce our own culture on ourselves. Because my friend got a call from his girlfriend. And usually we don't answer calls, but it was his girlfriend, so, you know, you have to do it. And she was crying. We were like, oh, no, shit, oh, God, no, what's wrong? And she needed him to come and see him. So he put the phone down, necked his pint, as he do, and he went. But we sat there as a group, and I am ashamed to say I was fully included in this, and we gave him stick for it. We said to him, oh, man, you're so whipped, you're so under the thumb, you were out with the lads tonight, what are you doing? But he was just going to comfort his girlfriend, who clearly needed him. But this is my point. We reinforce this apathetic culture of masculinity that allows us to feel nothing. That allows us that if we enjoy something too much, there's something wrong. And when it comes to facing down a problem, we face it with a stiff upper lip and we bang our chest in it. And it can't hurt us. But that stiff upper lip, that begins to quiver. And there's only so many times you can bang your chest before it begins to hurt. And this is, this is the point of my story, because as you can tell, I wouldn't be up here otherwise, that stiff upper lip attitude didn't work. So, when I was 16 years old, my head began to stop working. Uh, I was a pretty happy kid, I had a good set of friends, I ate well, I had a lovely family who I loved to bits, but my head just stopped working. I, I stopped eating, I stopped sleeping, I lost lots of weight, I became a generally unpleasant person. I became vague and distant from the people who I'm supposed to love most. And in a lot of cases, it cost me relationships that I have never got back and never will get back to this day. And this is all because I was unable to express what was a perfectly natural feeling inside my head because I was feeling too much and I wasn't allowed to express it. So I did, after a long set of convincing by my mother, I went to the doctors which was considered a defeat, that I had to go to the doctors, how my chest beating wasn't good enough. But luckily for me, I was put on a delightful cocktail of various drugs, and I went to therapy. And it was at this therapy where I began to go on what my therapist described as an emotional restoration, which is physically painful to say out loud, because it's the biggest cliche ever. <laughs> 
But what this did was it allowed me to feel more comfortable in not being masculine. And it meant that I was allowed to go and like things because I liked them. It wasn't, there was no pressure on me. I didn't have to like football because my friend liked football. I had to like football because I did. And it turns out I'm a massive fan of ABBA and girly cocktails because cracking band and some of them just taste great. Uh, and this isn't a thing people should be ashamed of because there ain't anything wrong with it. It's just what you like. We need to start liking things because we like the things. We need to start liking things and doing things that make us feel good, not because other people tell us they feel good. It's not about what looks cool. It's about what makes you happy, what makes you get out of bed in the morning. It's not about looking cool in front of your friends because if they're your friends, they'll stick with you anyway. And in life, there is a lot of things that are going to come at us. And... This sounds rich considering that I'm only 19, but there's a lot of things that are really not very good. And it could be that your house gets flooded. It could be that you lose a loved one. It could be that you lose your job, you crash your car, you are just completely lost. And these things are gonna happen. I mean, we can try our hardest and we can beat our chest, but they will happen and they're, they're gonna come for us. So by getting rid of this culture of apathy and that Something's wrong if you feel something. We can be prepared for when they do because we can desperately try to stop them, but we're not going to stop them. So being prepared for when they do happen is the best course of action. And I know this sounds rich because I'm young and 19 and have little life experience, but it's not supposed to be a cure-all. I'm not telling you all if you do this, your life problems will be fine. What I'm saying is that it's important to be able to feel like you can make these connections to help these things. It's important to be able to say, you know what, I need help. And this doesn't mean we all have to become soppy snowflakes who cry at everything and you know, watch Titanic on repeat every night and cry at Kate Winslet. It just means that if you feel like you do need help, you can get it. There's no forcing everyone to cry. If that's not you, that's not you, don't go for it. You do not have to do anything you don't want. But if you feel like you need to and you feel like you can't, that's the problem. Because here's the crux of my talk. Suicide is the biggest killer of men between the ages of 20 and 49. This year, 7,000 men and women will take the decision to leave behind their loved ones, their family, their friends, their brothers, their sisters, their parents, and they'll end their own life. 7,000 people in the UK make that decision this year. And this is because we've reinforced the culture that it's not okay to express how you feel and that there's something wrong inside of you that, and you need to bury that away. It wipes us out like an epidemic. If this was a disease, it would be vaccinated and crushed. If this was any other threat to humanity, it would be stopped. If it was a war, we would have already lost because we are not fighting it. We are doing nothing. So you guys came here with people today. And this is what I want you to do. You don't have to, but I think it's gonna be good. Let someone know how you're doing. And I don't mean a, hi man, how you doing? Boom, all this handshaky stuff. I mean like, a, how are you? Are you feeling all right? Like, is something on your mind? Have you had a really, really rubbish day and you want to tell someone about it? Ask your friends how they are. Like, make these connections that mean you don't actually have to ask them because you already know. So they don't have to ask for help because you're already there. So when you leave this room, go home and ring your ma, tell her you love her. Ring your best mate, tell them you love them. Because you do, it's your ma and your best mate, and if you don't, you're doing something wrong there. Just tell them, let them know, because in a world that is increasingly consumed by hatred from all angles, this little bit of love is not gonna hurt anyone. Nice one, cheers.